again. Um, today I want to do a video about language learning and old age. And I'm doing this because I received um, a comment on my YouTube channel from a gentleman in, gee, I think it was Peru, but somewhere in Latin America, who said that he was very encouraged by my videos and that he was interested in learning English and that he was 75 years old. And it made me realize that, um, you know, and I should, perhaps I should also say that I had uh, dinner with a family, uh, recent immigrants from China and their 12 year old son. And they were very keen that the son should learn, you know, not only he speaks English very well, but learn other languages. And, and they sort of seemed to feel that they were too old to do it. And they were probably in their mid forties. So I thought about, you know, and then my, in my own case, I guess since 19, since the age of 55, I've got, you know, have become very interested in learning more and more languages. So uh, let's just look at this issue of, of language learning and age. Um, first of all, uh, you know, I can say as someone who's going to be 67 in October, that I don't feel any older than I did 30 years ago. I mean, yeah, I, in a way, like my body, I mean, if I go jogging for too long, I get stiffer than I did before, but uh, yeah, I don't really feel that very different. I know that I look different. I looked much younger 30 years ago, even 20 years ago, and uh, that's fine, but I'm the same person. And, uh, you know, we can only live, we can only live our life, you know, in the present. That's the only time we actually live it. We can prepare for things in the future, but we can only really enjoy the moment. Uh, yeah, we can enjoy anticipation as well. Um, and I guess as you get older, you've got less things to anticipate in terms of the number of years in front of you. But in terms of living your day-to-day -day life, I don't feel that it makes much difference. So if I look at the enjoyment that I get from learning languages, um, I mean, when I listen to my Russian radio, when I read in Russian and now in Czech, when I'm discovering so much about the lives and the history of people in the Czech Republic or the history of Czechoslovakia or the Austro-Hungarian Empire, when I talk to uh, my Czech tutors through Skype, uh, when I'm able to listen to uh, an interview and, the, you know, these daily interviews, Yaktovidi, for example, where they're talking to different people and I'm able to follow exactly what they say. I mean, in some instances, I know I, I, I listen and read at the same time and I essentially know every word there. Um, sometimes I don't, sometimes I don't understand it. I mean, the enjoyment is tremendous. When I go to Prague in uh, October, not only will I be able to communicate with people, will I be able to read the signs, read the newspapers, understand what people are saying. I will have much more knowledge about the history of the country, the history of the city, the different buildings, you know, the National Theater, whatever it might be, Charles Bridge, who was Charles IV, um, all this kind of stuff. I mean, it is so rewarding. And it doesn't matter whether you're 35, 55, 65, 75, 85. I have a friend who's 83 and he's studying Spanish and he loves doing it and he reads Spanish novels or Latin American novels. Um, you know, I mean, age, it's, 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 it's interesting, the perspective we have on age. Uh, I remember when I was uh, working for a large company here in Vancouver at the age of, say, 30, whatever I was, mid-30s, we had a vice president, I guess, who was in his, he was 53 and he used to go kayaking, uh, you know, in the ocean. And I thought, wow, that's amazing for someone 53. Well, I'm 67, almost 66. I go kayaking in the ocean. Um, yeah, whatever. I mean, I think, uh, I certainly don't think that our brain cells, there is undoubtedly some deterioration. I, I mean, I'm no, uh, you know, uh, expert on uh, the physiology of the body, but I mean, I've, uh, I've been uh, less than a year on Czech and uh, I understand a lot. I'm, I'm doing great with my Czech. Uh, I, I think I've learned it faster than any other language, given the time that I've spent on it. 
granted I had the Russian beforehand. But now, if you say Russian and Czech, I'm into this Slavic world that was never a part of anything that I understood before. And now I'm able to be conversant with it and understand it and understand some of the issues. And when I finish that, I'm going to go back to Korean and bring my Korean up to a, a decent level. It's, it's just, it just gives you so much. It really doesn't matter. And, and every minute that, that I'm involved with these languages, I'm deriving tremendous enjoyment. And when I encounter people, even again, like last night with these Chinese people to speak in Chinese for the whole evening, it's a great sense of enjoyment. Obviously, that's a language that I learned 40 years ago. Uh, but if I, had had, if I had an opportunity to spend an evening with some Russian people or Czech people, then I'd have that sense of enjoyment and achievement. So to me, it doesn't matter what age you are. Now, because I'm not an expert, I, won't, I can't really get into the subject of how learning uh, foreign languages is good for the brain and staves off Alzheimer and so forth. Alzheimer's, it's possibly true. I don't know, but I'm sure it's good for the brain to continue to challenge the brain. And I also am quite convinced from my reading that when the brain is challenged and then is able to you know, cope with the challenge and overcome the obstacles and achieve certain things, the brain has a sense of, of, of satisfaction. And so that has to be healthy. It has to be healthy in the same sense as, as exercising is healthy. And of course, I also exercise uh, physically. So I guess the whole, the point of all this is to say that we often think of language learning as something that kids are better at, and in many ways, in terms of quickly assimilating a new accent and new phraseology, the kids seem to have less resistance to change, and therefore they adapt to the new language more quickly. But um, we can all do it. Um, it's not something that should be reserved for kids. It's not something that's reserved for any particular age. And there's no reason why uh, people of any age, including older people, whatever that means, is 50 older, 60 older, 70, 80, whatever the age is, I think that there's tremendous enjoyment uh, that we can achieve from language learning and it's never too late to start. And so I, I am, this is uh, thanks to the gentleman in, I think it was Peru, who commented on one of my Spanish videos and perhaps I should do the video also in Spanish and send it to him. But good for him at 75 and I hope to be with him 10 years from now and he'll be presumably on another language uh, when he's 85. So thanks for listening. Bye for now.